Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I think we'll go ahead and get started. We are excited to share with you today um, two labor market assessments conducted in Iraq um, presented by our guest speakers from World Learning. Go ahead. I'm Laura Goldmark, the co-champion of the community of practice um, and Jack Omondi, our other co-champion is not here, but might join us later. And we also have Elodie Pierre, who's sort of another honorary co-champion with us. Thank you. So just a couple of housekeeping. We love the cameras and we love to see you and we love to hear you, but because of bandwidth issues and because this is global, you turn off your camera and your microphone unless you're gonna speak. Um, and that helps everybody be able to hear. We are recording this. And Stephanie is your person if you have any technical issues that you wanna discuss. Thanks. So we are the Business Entrepreneurship and Private Sector Engagement Community of Practice. We are gathering people to discuss and share knowledge about the best way to do these things. And when I say these things, it means identify opportunities for young people. And specifically this year, we've had a number of webinars that build on a theme, which is the best way to understand employer needs. And so we're looking at labor market assessments and hence the two case studies today in Iraq. And there's a link to the discussion group if you wanna follow us. And here's also the way you can register. Um, some of you may have received the invitation but may not be actually registered as a member of the group. Others may be already registered. Thanks. So here we go. Um, I'm just going to introduce our three speakers, including Hannah, so that I can then cede the floor to her. Um, she's been with World Learning since 2019. She's done a lot of work in North Africa. And she has been in the field, um, having been in the Peace Corps in Morocco. And she is an expert in youth workforce development, entrepreneurship, private sector engagement, all the things that we do, and positive youth development, of course. So I did want to tell you about our two other speakers before I hand it over to Hannah to moderate the session. Mayada Al Safi is the country program manager. She's been with World Learning since 2010, and she oversees several different programs. She loves traveling and music, probably like most of us. Greetings to Mayada. And now we have Noor, who's a senior program coordinator. We're so happy to have you with us today, Noor. Um, working in the southern region of Iraq, been with World Learning since 2019, oversees the Bas Baswala, I don't know if I'm saying it right, mentorship program run by World Learning in Iraq. Okay, over to you, Hannah, to explain um, what we're covering today. Thanks. All right. Hello, good morning, good afternoon to everyone joining. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of a background of World Learning's approach and methodology to our rapid labor market assessments, or we say our LMA. You'll probably hear that abbreviation a bit. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit more background as Mayad and Noor present their specific experiences um, through their two projects in Iraq. Um, but for world learning, uh, we conduct these labor market assessments through our, mostly within our youth workforce development practice area uh, projects. And like many who conduct these assessments, we have some key reasons uh, why we conduct them. I will present that. But first our approach, our, our kind of key themes are is that it's current. We want to make sure that we're gaining a better understanding of the current skills and gaps, the hiring trends and future opportunities that are relevant at this moment in whatever specific country, context, region, city that we're working in. Uh, we want it to be targeted. So we're building on existing studies with information that is more specific to our population or demographic uh, that we're working with and the context or the targeted industry sectors that we're prioritizing for our specific uh, project or um, country portfolio. Then we build relationships with uh, private sector and other stakeholders who can help support youth and women in different ways. So finding other allies, advocates for a more enabling environment. 
to help kind of set us our project up for success. All right, next slide. All right, NY conduct an RLMA. I kind of previewed some of that previously. Uh, one, we want to identify the skills in demand, skills gap, our, the technical hard skills, software, language, soft skills. So we do this one to be able to adapt our curriculum to make sure that what we are um, teaching in our soft skills employability programs and sometimes digital and technical skills program is that they align with what is being prioritized by key sectors of growth uh, within these specific contexts. And then as a way to also identify um, you know, what we need to provide linkages within the context of other technical training providers, um, whether formal or private. Then we want to also have current recruitment and uh, hiring needs. We want those identified so that one, we get a better idea of really what's in demand in these specific contexts as a way to, you know, for what to prioritize, how to provide this information to our participants to make informed decisions. We are uh, looking at what are really the high potential growth sectors, one through just like economic growth and where more opportunities are coming from, but also what are sectors considered to be attractive by youth so that we're kind of looking at both the supply and demand side and trying to meet both needs. And then that fits into the expectations and norms. So we can also, we also try to get an idea of what the perceptions of these different sectors and opportunities are for these our particular populations, uh, women, just to make sure that we're really responding to what they're thinking and expecting as well, and even sometimes their parents. And then finally, we're also through this uh, kind of baseline uh, RLMA is we're also identifying other functioning support services that, that perhaps need improvement depending on you know, the scope of the project. Uh, but also other linkages to already existing support services. So whether that's um, virtual job boards, other employment services, uh, government employment agencies, we want to provide as many linkages. So again, to strengthen the youth enabling environment um, throughout this project as we support their transition into the labor market. Um, next slide. All right, um, so our phases for our RLMA, it's uh, three key phases. We first do a background desk phase to identify really what are the growing industry sectors uh, for a better targeting of our respondent sample and what to prioritize. Like, um, you know, whether it is ICT, whether it is automobile, tourism, agri you know, agribusiness, textile, trying to really figure out what are Really the sectors of growth and opportunity. Um, and then also looking at other labor market data just to kind of give us that baseline. And then we, in our next phase is really where we hit the ground uh, with a survey prioritizing employer representatives, but also reaching certain civil society and public sector stakeholders, other youth organizations who can help better give, you know, give us a better idea of the context environment, um, in addition to what the employer representatives are, per, what kind of information they're providing in our survey. Our survey, we can also you know, build out to the way we want it to get the information we want, whether as you know, specific as possible or more broad to get us a better idea of the overall community. And like I said, other stakeholders in the labor market. And then finally, the last phase is the completion of an analysis of all the data um, and then the write-up and then dissemination, whether that's internally within our team or if it's within a kind of advisory board or other type of coordination of other stakeholders so that we all kind of have access to this information and we're all on the same page and perhaps are making informed commitments or decisions on um, their role and goals for the project. All right, next slide. My last piece is just the methodology and sampling. Different approaches we have depending on how complex we want this um, labor market assessment to be, how much information we're trying to get. So we've got just the simple random sample where we're just you know, picking and choosing uh, lists from Chamber of Commerce registries, industrial, you know, 
uh, associations, clusters, and just to get a more general idea of the overall ecosystem. Stratified sample is where we're pre-selecting our industry sectors. So we're identifying, we wanna focus on these top five sectors and that's where we really will then zoom in and try to get a sample from that. And then Snowball is where we're determining particular sectors or characteristics and we're using existing relationships um, from context and that it's more for the rapid findings. It's more of a rapid method. Um, for us, just depending on the scope or the demand, even from the donor, um, and how much time we have. So that is just a, an overview of our approach or methodology. And now um, I'm going to hand it over to Mayada, who's going to give you a great overview of her experience with World Learning's delivery of the labor market assessment in Iraq. Uh, thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm so happy and excited to be here with you to share with you uh, an idea about our work in Iraq. Uh, it's a program and uh, uh, the uh, RLMA that was conducted for ELISA program. Uh, so let me share with you a glance about the Iraqi economy to give you an idea why we are implementing uh, those youth empowering programs in Iraq. Uh, the Iraqi population is around 40 million, estimated for around 40% four, uh, of the population are under 15 years old, and only around 3% are over 65. So working age population are uh, more than 21 million in Iraq. Also within the Middle East region, Iraq is a medium sized economy with a GDP of 574 billion USD. Business conditions are very, very low compared to the region. Like, like many large uh, oil exporters, the Iraqi economy is not very diversified and government plays a key role in the economy. On the nationwide scale, the government provides 40% of all jobs and uh, the private sectors uh, are providing 70 to 60 to 70% uh, of uh, in both informal and formal uh, private sector employment. Also, Iraq used to have uh, the highest rate of unemployment in the Middle East. More than half of the country's young urban males were unemployed, as well as the large majority of young women. The year 2014 marked a turning point. The ISIL Daesh insurgency in mid of 2014 caused a significant economic damage. Trade routes were closed, economic activities in the North region were held hostage. And upon normalizing the political situation and moving back to normal life, the country still faces a number of important challenges, including economic diversification away from oil related activities, also fighting corruption, training and integrating youth and women in the labor force finally building uh, an institutional capacity and reducing the size of informal sector. So um, in response to all these challenges, uh, uh, in December, 2020, World Learning started implementing ELITES program. Uh, ELITES is English language investment and training for economic success. It is a virtual program for about eight months designed for unemployed Iraqi youth at the age of 20 to 25. Uh, those who are currently uh, enrolled in college still at, towards the end of their uh, college study or uh, a recent high school or, or university graduate uh, who are seeking for jobs opportunities in the private sector specifically. We, World Learning, conducted a, a rapid labor market assessment, uh, RLMA, in November 2020, uh, uh, prior to the program start. Uh, 
to better target program activities and ensure that the training aligns with the private sector opportunities and expectations. So the purpose of the assessment was focused on uh, identifying entry-level job opportunities for young Iraqis, as well as identifying skills gap in the areas of English language, computer course, soft skills, and management skills. The data were collected uh, from 79 uh, people who are uh, representing 14 different industries and nine different cities. The, uh, the assessment for the ELITSA program was a nationwide assessment where we covered uh, most of the cities in Iraq and uh, the approaching to different sectors. As you can see, the respondents were like 43% of uh, the respondents come from the Business Industry Association representatives. 37% uh, of the respondents came from the employer representatives, such as HR manager. 13% uh, of uh, the data collected came from NGO or civil society uh, organizations that specifically support youth employment. Also, 6% uh, of the data collected came from education representatives, and 1% come from the uh, government agency representatives. I can uh, list here the uh, RLMA key findings. So regarding English skills, most of the uh, responses came to report that the entry level candidates were most likely to uh, need English skills for reading reports, writing emails and letters, holding telephone and video calls, writing reports or papers, and selling to English speaker clients and socially interact with foreign coworkers or visitors. The skills, uh, uh, sorry, these skills were considered applicable and needed for entry level job candidates by like 85% of the uh, respondents. As for the computer skills uh, across the four regions in Iraq, over half of all respondents identified that uh, Microsoft Excel. Uh, like uh, email, knowledge management, cloud software, such as Google Docs and Teams are um, highly in demand in, in the private, private sector, uh, um, in the private sector. Also uh, customer relations management software, such as Salesforce, uh, this come with 53% uh, of the data collected. Also website, uh, development software such as WordPress. So those were the skills that were identified as required in the uh, entry uh, level of uh, job seekers. Uh, also for the soft skills, uh, again, over half of the all, all respondents mentioned that 10 soft skills are usually missing from young people uh, who, have, who they have interviewed or hired, uh, like resilience, managing emotions, goal orientation, uh, positive selves concept. Um, also like uh, problem solving, critical thinking, decision making, uh, effective listening and conflict management, punctuality and work, uh, work planning. The, uh, the private sector representatives uh, uh, mentioned many obstacles that they usually face uh, when they uh, start the process of hiring their employees. And I can um, here summarize some of those uh, obstacles uh, who were uh, repeated in different, in, in, in many uh, surveys that we conducted. The first obstacle or the first challenge is that the youth 
are unwilling to work in the private sectors. They are more into looking for the jobs in the public sector. It is very rare. It is a, a low opportunity to find a job in the public sector, but they still are keep looking for the public sector uh, over the uh, private sector. Also like uh, lack of practical learning or work experience, candidates lacking key skills or uh, competencies reflecting the soft skills gap and the management skill gaps discussed uh, earlier. Also, uh, lack of effective job search, matching platforms to connect skilled candidates with companies. A mismatch of Young's expectation regarding the entry-level salaries and working hours. And finally, uh, what respondents referred to as lack of the culture of self-development among the candidates. I would love here to share with you some of the respondents uh, of the private sector companies uh, uh, shared uh, through the surveys about the ideal candidate, how would it be? Uh, one of the companies mentioned that the ideal candidate uh, is someone who have the flexibility, ability to work under pressure, active communication, technical skills, other work skills like accounting and financial management. This response came from a bank representative seeking candidates for IT programming, social media specialists, and accountants. Also, another uh, uh, representative mentioned that uh, an ideal candidate would carry ambition inquisitive, open to learn, hardworking, and career-oriented. Uh, this response came from uh, airport terminal representatives who uh, was seeking for entry-level engineers and lower-level workers. Thank you so much, and I will uh, pass it over to my colleague, Noor al to to talk about her uh, experience with BOSA lab program and the uh, conducting the assessment. Thank you. Thank you, Mariada, and thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here with you today to join Dukzvreda to share my experience with BOSA lab program in the southern region of Iraq and also with the LMAs that we have conducted. Uh, BOSA lab program is a mentorship program implemented in the southern region of Iraq. In September 2019, World Learning started implementing BOSA like a mentorship program in the southern region, building on the prior Maharat mentorship program, uh, which was implemented in Basra, which is the southern region of the uh, southern city of Iraq. BOSALA is an eight-month program designed for university and vocational students aged 19 to 22 who are not currently employed. And the program aimed at to, to provide the students the opportunity to, to develop leadership, job readiness, and entrepreneurial skills by engaging with a local mentor. Word Learning conducted elements in November 2019 and March 2021 to better understand the new regions and ensure program activities align with the private sector opportunities and expectations. Next, please. So uh, the southern region of Iraq uh, is rich with oil and natural resources and expanding to three new cities besides Basra, which are the Al-Misan and Fenna needed uh, a new understanding of the region and the private sector operating in these cities. So we conducted two uh, LMAs uh, to understand and comprehend the new implementation phase of Bausala Mentorship Program. So we conducted an LMA in March 2019 and a follow-up study to that in March 2021. In the 2019 survey, World Learning managed to conduct 26 background interviews and one focused group discussion in uh, Basra. But in 2021, uh, World Learning conducted three, eight, 38 online surveys in the four sites. But due to COVID-19 restrictions, 
no interviews uh, or FGDs were conducted in the follow-up study. And the, both uh, studies were followed up by analysis and reporting and integrating the results we collected from the four sites into the program curriculum and activities to better respond to the demands of the private sector in the four sites. So in 2019, respondents uh, in the four sites uh, diverse from different industries. Uh, and in, the, in these studies, we're learning used ISIC classification and uh, to classify the respondents in the both studies. So we have in the 2019 and 21 uh, uh, studies, 12 in mining and oil and gas extraction, three worked in human health and social work affairs, uh, two in administration, two and other interviewees worked in the construction, electricity, wholesale, retail, information and technology and administration and support uh, activities. The stakeholders in the 2019 respondents were uh, 19 employer representatives from the private sector, five NGOs, uh, international and local ones, and two government agents. Next the slide, slide please. In 2021, uh, most of the, all of the interviews were done online because of the online restrictions. And again, we use the same classification codes to follow up the respondents' uh, perspective and industries. The, large, the largest number of respondents came from the mining oil and gas extraction forming 42% of the uh, respondents and followed by electricity, gas and air conditioning supply forming 13% and education 13% as well. Other respondent sector included the human health and social work activities 10%, agriculture and fishing 8% and accommodation and food services activities forming 5%. These surveys, uh, in addition to offering their, their insights uh, to the program and its curriculum, the RLMA's respondents were willing to support the program directly. And the result was that we found that 135 planned entry-level hiring among respondents in 2021, and they offered that they would reach out to the program to seek possible candidates um, from the participants of Bausala program. 26 respondents said they would be willing to speak with a group of youth to give them uh, guidance, while 22 would be willing to mentor a group of youth either for several sessions or ongoing relationship. And finally, 19 would be willing to host a youth from the program for a short internship or job shadowing. So these surveys and analysis were not only for number uh, collecting sake, but also it helped providing opportunities for the youth in the Southern region. Next slide, please. Collecting data uh, were followed by analysis. In 2019 and 2021, Aralanese showed that Southern Iraq has a greater emphasis on science and engineering professionals than is the trend nationally, which is expected due, due to the oil fields in the region. Understanding this trend helped the program comprehend the skills requirements in the southern region of Iraq. The studies also help the program provide an enabling environment for youth by utilizing the network of connections built during the survey uh, phase uh, to help the program participant, participant with job shadowing, internship, and a connection that may help them in the future to advance their careers. Next slide, please. So we conducted the LMA, uh, which were very comprehensive in 2019, but we needed uh, a follow-up study and although the first LMA was very uh, thorough and comprehensive, but it was important to conduct the follow-up study because uh, we needed to gain a better understanding of the region hiring trend during the COVID-19 pandemic, and also to build a relationship with the private sector and stakeholders who can support mentees in different ways, 
and to build on information we have gathered in past uh, LMAs. The follow-up helped the program know the shifting employer demands pattern in these occupations in the region and how can help make decisions in the future. Next slide. So we used the numbers and the results uh, and it translated them into action in the program, first by updating the curriculum to respond to the private sector needs and also to solicit the respondents' willingness to support and connection with the private sector representatives and incorporate private sector recommendation to program activities and respond to their demands. And despite the studies were very successful and helped the program greatly, but we have faced challenges in the southern region due to the lack of trust uh, because of the economic and political instability in the southern region that have faced uh, many uh, waves of uh, public uh, protest over uh, poor infrastructure and employment. And also the lead researchers and the team who conducted the surveys could not reach out to public sector representative easily to, due to the security threat and again, because of the lack of trust. And the limited official resources, data and statistics on Iraq, we needed numbers all about the economy and population, but we could not find this easily because of the lack of studies, either on government level and international level. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity, and I hope that helped you understand a little bit of the program. Great. Thank you so much, um, Noor and Mayetta, for your detailed overview of your, ex your unique experiences, even within one country, <laughs> um, the different projects. So I'm going to just facilitate at this time uh, just some uh, synthesis questions to get us all reflecting together, uh, and then we'll open it up uh, to the whole group to kind of share some thoughts, but I'm just gonna dive in and start asking a few questions to Mayada and Noor. Um, so my first question uh, for Mayada and Noor is, as this is their youth power, we're really focusing on, you know, making sure youth are at the driver's seat of this. Could you just tell um, us a little bit more about how youth were engaged through the RLMA process? Hi, Hannah, uh, I will jump in to answer this question. So the program is designed and directed to youth in the Southern region of Iraq. And um, all of the employees of the program are youth under 30. So the team who conducted the research and the lead researchers who collected the data were youth. And we found surprisingly that uh, the most encouraging respondents came from youth employee, employees in the private sector. They were more willing to collaborate and give their insights and help the program in collecting the surveys, the numbers, and share their experiences more than the old em uh, employees uh, or employers who work in the traditional public sector who were more hesitant to participate in this uh, in this experience. So it was uh, led by youth and focused on youth and uh, directed by youth. Excellent. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so to kind of follow up on that question and, you know, your thought, your experiences in making sure that youth were really the ones leading this, the young professionals, how could we adapt our methodology to be even more uh, youth-led? And then what is the overall value of having a more youth-led um, RLMA? Yes. Uh, uh, in the previous studies we conducted, we focused on the private sector and the employers uh, who were mostly youth, but in the future, we can also have another side of the LMA where we ask the youth 
who we are targeting either in university or vocational uh, levels and ask them about their expectations, what skills they do need, what skills they believe they lack and need in the, uh, to conquer the private sector. So this aspect can be developed in the future so we can meet their expectations. Other way is by uh, reaching out to youth researchers to strengthen the professional, their professional skills and research skills. And by this, we can reach out to our alumni. We, we are implementing this program in the Southern region since 2015. So we have a huge circle of alumni that can help and willing to help by volunteering in doing their research. And another way is by survey, que survey questions uh, and that can involve the youth in the design phase of the LMA by asking them to review the, the surveys, uh, design the questions, uh, uh, consolidate them about what they want us to focus on and ask the private sector about so we can integrate them more into the process and get their perspective on this, uh, these studies. I was on mute. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Noor. I just am going to do a few more questions so we have enough time to open up questions to everyone joining us today. Uh, another one is for both Noor and Mayada. In what ways was this these RLMAs for your projects? How were they most valuable? Uh, thank you, Hannah. I think I uh, can answer this question. Well, to be honest, it was very uh, valuable uh, experience um, help designing the, the project. We didn't want to end up with um, a certain set of skills that we need to deliver to those Iraqi youth with regardless the real need of, uh, of skills and what are the expectations of the uh, private sector. So, uh, to be aware of the private sector expectation of youth and of the employee, the type of employee that they are looking for. Uh, the assessments were very uh, helpful in, in that regard. Also, uh, the companies who joined, uh, who you know, supported and uh, filled the surveys and uh, 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 participated in that assessment, they saved money and efforts to, in regard of looking for uh, candidates. Uh, most of those companies were uh, uh, interested and they keep contacting us because towards the end of the program, we had a kind of job fair. So they were always asking uh, when, uh, when will we, uh, when will you uh, uh, have this event? Because they know that uh, the set of skills that we provided, it is, it is specifically what they mentioned in the surveys and what is reflected in the survey. Uh, also, the, the assessment helped uh, strongly in building connections uh, with, with the private sector. Again, this is a project that is uh, bridging the gap between the private sector and the, the, the Iraqi youth. So uh, the survey helped uh, building the connections with the stakeholders, different stakeholders in the private sector for, uh, so, and they supported in um, conducting or and supported our next upcoming activities like the job shadowing and also the job fair. Uh, also to have a better, um, uh, to be better market data for uh, Iraqi youth to make informed decision. Uh, I would like also to share that the assessment, we shared assessment results with the, with the participants, with the 100 participants of Elisa, Elisa program. So they would understand why we are providing this set of a skill instead of something else. Uh, so uh, we shared this information with them and uh, they understand why we are providing this set of skills. Great. Um... I think I'm just going to ask, uh, Noor, did you, I'm sorry, I don't, did you have anything to add? Yes, thank you, Hannah. Uh, beside that, uh, the 
the insight from the private sector helped the program to develop according to the development of the private sector itself in the southern region uh, in the light of the rapid changes, whether because of the COVID-19 pandemic or because of the economic changes that hit the world entirely. So we were able to respond and prepare the youth participating in the, in the program to be ready to the challenges that may face them in the future. And uh, also, uh, that was a great opportunity to provide them with the education that they don't receive in the universities because uh, as known that the public education don't prepare the youth to be part of the private sector after university. All right, I'm just going to ask one more question and then we'll open it up for the rest of the group. So if you just provide your thoughts in a quick points, um, then we can move on. But I know you have so much important information and experience to share. Um, so I guess I'll combine. So what were some of the key challenges for your team to carry out the RLMA? And how would you apply some lessons learned to the next time you execute an RLMA um, with your programs? And as succinct as possible, <laughs> so we can open up to others. Yes, sure. Uh, um, let me uh, phrase some of the challenges that we um, handled uh, while conducting the <clears throat> assessment. Uh, of course, as Noor mentioned in her answer to your question, Hannah, the uh, COVID-19 um, hitting uh, globally, uh, it was a, a huge challenge. Um, we couldn't like uh, uh, easily meet with the representative of the companies in order to uh, have a, a kind of interview uh, and collecting data through interview. So we lean more to the survey uh, type of uh, collecting data. Uh, also, uh, I'm, uh, I think the private sector at that time was, uh, they did not, most of them, they did not understand the purpose of, of conducting those surveys and collecting those data. Why we are doing this? Uh, why we are requesting data about their companies? You know, they were uh, a, a, a bit concerned about that. And maybe this is related to the security situation uh, as well. Uh, but we, uh, to the fact we approached more than 79, uh, we approached uh, over 100 company representatives and uh, different stakeholders, but we got, um, uh, we, we got results from uh, 79. So yeah, there is a, 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 a percentage who did not, who refused to share this kind of information. Uh, also, yeah, uh, uh, as Noor mentioned, uh, this is a new idea, uh, lack of uh, trust, uh, unsupportive uh, public sector. We also approached uh, government agency and some to a certain extent, they were not responses. I will leave the space to Noor to maybe share also uh, about her experience and uh, the lessons learned. Thank you, Mayada. Uh, during the desk phase, uh, the major challenge was the lack of previous studies. They were very limited uh, and focused on the national level instead of focusing on certain cities in Iraq, because we were focusing mainly on the re southern region, we didn't find that much studies to, to help us understand the economy and the population. And when we went to the public sector government agents to look for numbers, statistics, or whatever information we need to the study, they didn't have this information as well, besides the, the lack of trust in the international NGOs reaching out to them. They were very skeptical, hesitant to either help us with this study or provide us with the support letter that we need to go to the private sector to collect these data. Beside that, one of the challenges also is uh, the economy in the southern region is uh, not very varied. Uh, it depends on oil and gas because this region is one of the richest region in the Middle East with oil and gas. So most of the uh, private sector, whether local or international, is working in the oil and gas. Most of the results in both the studies in 2019 and 2021 came from respondents from oil and gas sector. And uh, this is unsurprising, but it does not help a lot about understanding the whole picture and the whole spectrum of economy in the Southern region, because this region is very rich. It has a lot of natural resources, 
but yet the people and uh, and local governments here rely a lot on the oil and gas sector and that was a major challenge for the study to get more comprehensive results. All right. Thank you so much, Noor. Um, I believe at this time we're going to, oh, all right, so we're going to open up to some questions from those who are joining us. And I believe there is a question in the chat from, all right. So one question I'm going to just read out loud and Noor and Mayada, if you're able to respond. So <clears throat> this is a, I think a multi-part question. So um, I'll just read it out. How far do you see the current challenges which face private sector in Iraq particularly the lack of mutual cooperation with public governmental sector? And how do these challenges affect on identifying market needs? Can you share it in the chat, Han? Um, sure, I will, give me one second. Okay, all right. So I think it's just the question, I think the general idea of the question is, is how does, you know, kind of the lack of that support, mutual cooperation from public government sector in Iraq, how does that impact your ability to carry out these assessments to get the relevant market data? I hope I synthesize that correctly. <laughs> yes. Can I answer that? Please, yes. Yeah. Uh, the major challenge from public and governmental sector cooperation is impacting the private sector because uh, international companies and local companies, they cannot operate without the permission of the uh, government. They are licensed to operate here according to the government rules. So if the government is not helping uh, such studies and not providing any facilitation with statistic data and numbers or even preventing NGOs from operating in this uh, in these activities, uh, private sector will be reluctant to uh, enroll in such uh, studies or surveys because they would be afraid of retaliation of the government, even the international big companies that are operating in the southern region. And of course, it will impact identifying uh, the markets, uh, the private market needs and what they expect from the students, because uh, again, it's going to be impacted by the uh, challenges imposed by the government. The government will be uh, controlling most of the economy, so we will not understand what these private sector require from youth and university students. Thank you so much, Noor. Mayada, do you have anything else to add on this, or? Uh, no, thank you, Hannah. Uh, okay. Nothing to add. Okay, um, let's get another question here. Do you have to get a special permission from the government to conduct the LMA for your project? I would answer for the nationwide experience with elite program, there wasn't a need to get such permission. We usually as a world learning and with and uh, different programs, we get permission from different ministries to implement one or of uh, or two of the phases of our programs but uh, and specifically for the assessment we didn't have to uh, get uh, a permission even those who uh, participated in the assessment process from the government agency they did not ask for this can i ask something kind of please yes nora uh we don't need permission uh, naturally, but uh, in the Iraqi situation, there is a lot of polarization and political parties are involved in everything. So uh, for in order to, for a private sector company to operate, they need connection with the government. And that the link is connection with a certain political party that would facilitate their work to get uh, more work more easy. So if the challenge is that we may face 
uh, a challenger from a certain political party or militia that are not approving of international NGOs operating in a certain region due to political uh, attitude or behavior or belief. So this is the challenge. It's more of a, a political behavior than a general law or gen government uh, attitude toward NGOs. Yes, I, uh, I, I, it's similar to also then our experiences in, in Algeria as well, of just how to navigate <laughs> the complexities of the system and the politics. Um, is there anyone who has any other questions for us? Or I all, can also um, maybe ask some questions for all of us to reflect on in our last few minutes together. Oh, yeah, I have a question, please. Um... My name is Emmanuel. I'm calling from Russia. Sorry, I joined a meeting late. Um, looking at the, uh, the discussion on the ground, uh, I really want to find out um, if this meeting is uh, um, targeted for young coming NGO in developing countries like Africa. Do they have opportunity? For them to showcase their own work, or is only made for people of uh, at the Afghanistan and others. So I really want to find out um, so that I can then ask my question properly. Thank you so much. Would it be possible to put um, just like a, a sentence of your question in the chat? Just having. I want to make sure we respond to your question, but the the connection or the sound is a little. Okay, I'll do that now. Okay, thank you. Well, um, I think just as we wait, I'll, you know, waiting for those questions, just for all of us on this call, just to reflect on as this is also kind of a learning and sharing opportunity. Um, uh, let's see here. I think another question we had is just for us to reflection, if anyone has thoughts is like, how else can we ensure that these LMAs, the rapid labor market assessments or labor market assessments, how do we ensure that they're more youth led or driven? What, you know, what are you doing with your organizations? How does your methodology vary to continue to pursue that very like youth led, youth driven approach? So as we wait for the, um, the other question, I just, I'll ask, there you go, okay. Okay, if it's, all right, um, it's asking if this, the LMA, our labor market assessment is targeting supporting up and coming NGOs in developing countries. Um, Nora Maeda, do you want to try to respond or I can as well? the question in the chat? I mean, of course, like uh, uh, the assessment as a part of the program is a, a, a way to support uh, youth. And uh, we also have connection with, like I'm talking about my experience in Iraq, like we, we were connected to youth uh, NGO or uh, NGO who was working with 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 youth specifically with youth uh, in order to help um, in uh, 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 implementing this program uh, and believe to you Hannah to add if you like. Um, and I think Laura, if you wanted to to contribute here to this question. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Emmanuel, it's great to see you and thanks for your question. Um, in, a, in a sense, this is, um, this is part of a series, this webinar, where we have asked a number of organizations that are currently conducting labor market assessments to share their experience. So it doesn't constitute a plan to support labor market assessments going forward. If that's of interest, then it would be great for you guys to tell us that and to explain you know, how that might work. I think one thing that World Learning has offered, which is very generous, is to share their tools. Um, we also had EDC, um, Educational Development Corporation, share um, their 
local LMAs in Rwanda and offer also to share materials. So we're figuring out how those materials can be helpful and how that might come together with either local support that, that NGOs might have in a country. Um, and then one last thing that we've thought about as part of this series is to have some donors um, come onto the call and talk about their either whether they have their own specific methodology that they use um, and other donors besides USAID, in other words, um, in, and, and to see you know, what they might have to say. And then that might be an appropriate question for them. So thanks. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just mindful of time, but I think there's just one interesting question in the chat. If maybe I can just respond to that quickly and then let the team uh, wrap up the webinar. So the last question was, we know that a lot of the, in these you know, contexts, youth and their parents are still very interested in working within the public sector. So how can we use our RLMA findings and implementation to adjust youth's willingness and incentives to work with the private sector? So we, having this market data and opportunities, it's really important to have that data and information that we include within our, um, our work links, soft skills and employability program and our Balsilla career mentorship program where we're presenting this information so that they can get a better idea of actual opportunities for them within their country. So that they get a better idea of, you know, really where is there an opportunity to grow um, professionally, helping to kind of instill more trust within the private sector as they sometimes think of it as too risky. Uh, and then we also through that is sometimes provide linkages for like job shadowing, um, sometimes we have mentors who are young professionals as well working within the private sector to reinforce the opportunities that exist within these key sectors of opportunity in the private sector. Because we understand that, yes, that's the, that's the disconnect is there is a private sector looking to hire and there's youth who are looking for something totally different than working within some of these sectors. So having that data is really important and a better understanding of their growth opportunities with it and then providing greater linkages and exposure uh, to these companies, what it's like to get a better idea of what it looks like, you know, through us job shadowing, site visits, uh, in mock interviews helps try to better sway them to these opportunities that exist in the private sector for them. Um, I'm just mindful of time, so I will hand it back over, I believe, to Lara and team. Yep, Ilvadi is going to close this out. Thank you so much, Hannah. Thank you. And Nora and Mayada. Go ahead, Ilvadi. All right. Well, many thanks to Word Learning for sharing their experience with the labor market assessment in Iraq. Um, I want also want to thank our speakers. Mayada and Noah for answering the questions and for their excellent presentation. And also thanks to you, Anna, for moderating. It was a pleasure to have you all with us. Um, so also um, thank you to everyone for participating and we hope you learn and enjoy this webinar. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on future BEPSI webinars and staying engaged with us on the Youth Power platform. Thank you very much. <laughs>